is Talk About a Thing. He's lived in Shanghai as a foreigner and experienced some odd things. He used to live in Sweden and he likes to talk about web development, programming, working online, and freelancing. There's a lot to unpack, so let's do it. This is Talk About a Thing. And now your host, Perala Hummer. Hello, and welcome back to Talk About a Thing, the podcast where we turn the complexities of global business into accessible, engaging conversations. I'm Perola Hammer, and in today's episode, we're setting our sights on the east to one of the most exhilarating and dynamic cities in the world, Shanghai. This bustling metropolis is not just China's economic powerhouse; it's a global beacon of culture, innovation. An opportunity, and today we delve into a topic that resonates with dreamers and doers across the globe: registering a company in Shanghai as a foreigner. Whether you're an entrepreneur with a vision, a business enthusiast eager to explore new frontiers, or simply intrigued by the prospect of international commerce, this episode is tailored for you. We'll be unpacking everything from the nitty-gritty of legal processes to the subtle nuances of cultural navigation. Shanghai, with its towering skyscrapers, vibrant street life, and a melting pot of cultures, offers a unique backdrop for business ventures. It's a city where tradition meets modernity, East meets West, and dreams meet reality. As a foreigner. The thought of starting a business in Shanghai can be both exhilarating and intimidating. There's a whole new world of opportunities, but it's paired with challenges unique to navigating an unfamiliar business landscape. But fear not, we're here to guide you through this labyrinth, breaking down the complexities into bite-sized, manageable pieces. So grab your notebooks, or just sit back and soak in the insights. As we embark on this exciting journey, today's episode is more than just a guide. It's a window into the heart of Shanghai's business world, offering you a front row seat to the opportunities that await in this dynamic city. So, without further ado, let's dive into the bustling streets of Shanghai and unravel the secrets of starting a business in this majestic city. Welcome to talk about a thing. Let's get started. Shanghai, often hailed as the city that never sleeps, is more than just a bustling urban expanse. It's a thriving hub of innovation, commerce, and endless possibilities, standing proudly as a testament to China's economic prowess. This city, with its glittering skyline and teeming streets, has steadily become a magnetic attraction for foreign entrepreneurs from all corners of the globe. The allure, a chance to tap into one of the world's fastest-growing markets, to be part of a story where ancient traditions blend seamlessly with cutting-edge technology. But let's face it: embarking on a business venture in a land so different from your own is no small feat. The path is riddled with questions and uncertainties. Where do you begin in a city of over 24 million people? How do you navigate the intricate web of legal requirements? In a country known for its unique business practices and regulatory environment, and perhaps most importantly, how do you ensure that your business is not just compliant, but also competitive in a market that is evolving at breakneck speed? Today, in Talk About a Thing, we're setting out to demystify these challenges. We're not just scratching the surface; we're diving deep into the heart of what it takes to set up a successful business in Shanghai. From understanding the nuances of local regulations to decoding cultural intricacies that could make or break your business, we're covering it all. We'll talk about the different types of business entities you can establish, delve into the steps of the registration process, and examine the financial and legal considerations you need to be aware of. But that's not all. We'll also explore the softer skills required to thrive in Shanghai's business landscape. The art of networking, the importance of cultural sensitivity, and the strategic approaches to problem solving in this unique context. So, 
Whether you're a seasoned business person or a budding entrepreneur, today's episode is designed to provide you with a comprehensive roadmap for navigating the vibrant yet complex terrain of Shanghai's business world. Together, we'll uncover the secrets to making your entrepreneurial dreams a reality in this extraordinary city. Let's embark on this journey together, step by step, unraveling the mysteries of setting up a business in Shanghai. Get ready to be equipped with the knowledge and insights. You need to turn your business vision into a successful reality in one of the world's most dynamic cities. When venturing into the vibrant business landscape of Shanghai, one of the first and most crucial decisions you'll face is choosing the type of business entity to establish. For foreigners, there are primarily three pathways to enter the market. The Wholly Foreign Owned Enterprise, WFOE, the Joint Venture, JV, and the Representative Office, RO. Each of these options comes with its own set of features, benefits, and limitations tailored to different business needs and goals. First, let's delve into the Holy Foreign Owned Enterprise, or WFOE. This option is particularly appealing for those who seek autonomy and full control over their business operations in China. As the name suggests, a WFOE allows 100% foreign ownership meaning you won't need to team up with a local Chinese partner. This independence is a significant advantage for many foreign entrepreneurs who wish to implement their global strategies without local constraints. However, with this autonomy comes a set of challenges. The process of setting up a WFOE is often more complex and involves higher capital requirements compared to other forms of entities. This means navigating through a more intricate bureaucratic process and ensuring compliance with various Chinese laws and regulations. But for those willing to invest the time and resources, AWWFOE offers unparalleled control and the full share of profits generated. Next up, we explore the realm of joint ventures or JVs for those who value local knowledge and wish to tap into established Chinese networks. Forming a JV can be a strategic move. By partnering with a Chinese company, you can leverage their market insights, resources, and relationships, which can be invaluable in navigating the local business environment. However, it's important to note that a JV involves sharing control, profits, and risks with your Chinese partner. This shared arrangement requires careful selection of a compatible partner whose vision aligns with yours and the ability to navigate a relationship that balances both parties' interests. A JV can be a powerful alliance if managed effectively, offering a blend of local expertise and international innovation. Lastly, we turn our attention to the Representative Office, or RO. This option is often considered a preliminary step for foreign businesses looking to get a feel for the Chinese market without committing extensive resources up front. Setting up an RO is generally simpler and less costly compared to a WFOE or JV. It's an excellent way for companies to conduct market research, establish business contacts, and understand the local business climate. However, it's crucial to be aware that an RO is quite limited in its operational scope. It's not permitted to engage in direct business activities or generate revenue. Think of it as a liaison office a presence that allows you to explore and prepare for potential future expansion. For companies not ready to dive in fully, but keen to test the waters, an RO can be an appropriate and strategic choice. Understanding these three types of business entities is fundamental when considering a foray into Shanghai's market. Each option offers different advantages and suits different business strategies and objectives. It's about weighing these options against your long-term goals and choosing the path that aligns best with your vision for your business in China. Now let's embark on the intricate journey of registering a company in Shanghai. This multi-step process is like navigating through a maze, each turn requiring attention and precision. Buckle up as we dive into each step, ensuring you're well prepared for what lies ahead. Step one the name game. 
Choosing a business name in Shanghai isn't as straightforward as it might seem. This initial step is more than a creative exercise. It's a strategic decision. Your business name needs to be unique within the city and comply with local naming conventions, which often include both a Chinese and English version. It's crucial to ensure that your chosen name doesn't infringe on existing trademarks and resonates well with the local market. I recommend having a few alternatives at hand to avoid any setbacks, as the name must be approved by the relevant authorities. This step, while seemingly simple, sets the tone for your brand identity in a new market. Step two: locking down a physical location in Shanghai. Having a tangible Physical office space is not just an operational necessity, but a legal requirement for company registration. This space can't be just any location; it needs to meet specific criteria set by the local authorities, including size, usage, and safety standards. This requirement underscores the importance of doing thorough research or consulting with local real estate experts to find a location that not only serves your business needs. But also complies with these regulations. Step three, the paperwork maze. This step is where the complexity intensifies. Gathering the necessary documentation is critical and varies depending on whether you're setting up a WFOE, JV, or RO. You'll need to prepare a comprehensive set of documents, including a detailed business plan, articles of association. And information about shareholders and directors, accuracy and thoroughness are paramount here, as any discrepancies can lead to delays in the registration process. Remember, each document plays a crucial role in defining the legal structure and operational scope of your business. Step four: applying for your business license. Once your paperwork is in order, it's time to submit it to the Shanghai Market Supervision Bureau. This step is where your business entity starts to take legal form. The application process involves a detailed review by the authorities, and it's common to experience some back and forth during this phase. Patience and persistence are key. Securing a business license is a milestone in your journey, as it officially recognizes your business in China. Step five: the financial nitty gritty. With your business license in hand. The next crucial steps involve registering with the local tax bureau and opening a bank account. These are not just administrative tasks; they are foundational to your business's legal and financial operations. Registering with the tax bureau is essential for compliance with China's tax regulations, and opening a bank account is necessary for any financial transactions. It's important to understand the nuances of China's banking and tax systems, or work with a financial advisor who can guide you through these processes. Navigating the registration process in Shanghai is like piecing together a complex puzzle. Each step is interconnected, and missing a piece can delay or even derail your business setup. But with careful planning, attention to detail, and a bit of patience. You can successfully navigate this journey. As we near the end of our journey through the complexities of setting up a business in Shanghai, it's important to pause and reflect on some critical do's and don'ts. These insights can be the difference between a smooth entry into the Chinese market and an uphill battle. Do prioritize professional translation. It's imperative to ensure all your documents are professionally translated into Chinese. This is not merely a linguistic issue, but a matter of legal precision and clarity. The nuances of language in legal documents can significantly impact their interpretation. Having a professional translator who is well versed in business and legal terminologies in both English and Chinese is invaluable. This ensures that your documents accurately reflect your intentions and comply with local regulations. Don't. Underestimate the power of Guanxi. In China, business is often built on relationships, or Guanxi. This concept goes beyond networking; it's about building a web of mutually beneficial relationships.
the right connections can open doors that would otherwise remain closed. They can expedite processes, provide access to necessary resources, and offer insights into local market dynamics. Cultivating and maintaining these relationships is an ongoing process and a critical aspect of doing business in China. Do. Embrace patience. Navigating the bureaucratic landscape in Shanghai or anywhere in China can be a test of patience. The process may be slow and you might encounter several hurdles along the way. It's important to stay the course and maintain a long-term perspective. Delays and setbacks are often part of the journey. Patience, persistence, and a flexible approach are key to overcoming these challenges. Don't neglect compliance. Adhering to Chinese business regulations is non-negotiable. The legal framework in China can be quite stringent, and non-compliance can lead to serious consequences, including fines, legal issues, and potentially the closure of your business. Stay informed about the latest regulations and ensure that your business adheres to them. It's advisable to work with legal experts who specialize in Chinese business law to ensure ongoing compliance. Do understand local business etiquette. The way business is conducted in China may differ significantly from what you're used to. From formal meetings to business dinners, understanding and respecting local business etiquette is crucial. This includes aspects like addressing individuals appropriately, gift-giving customs, and negotiation styles. Being culturally sensitive can significantly impact your business relationships and prospects in China. Don't ignore local market trends and consumer preferences. Success in Shanghai's market requires an understanding of local consumer behavior and preferences. What works in your home country might not resonate with Chinese consumers. Conduct thorough market research, stay abreast of local trends, and be willing to adapt your business model and strategies to meet local needs and expectations. Do leverage technology and social media. China is at the forefront of digital innovation and its tech-savvy population heavily relies on technology in their daily lives. Utilize digital platforms and social media effectively to market your business, connect with customers, and streamline operations. Platforms like WeChat and Alibaba are integral to the Chinese market, and understanding how to leverage them can give your business a significant advantage. And there we have it, your comprehensive, albeit slightly labyrinthine, guide to registering a company in Shanghai as a foreigner. It's a journey that's not for the faint of heart. It requires perseverance, adaptability, and a keen understanding of the local business landscape. And let's not forget a healthy dose of humor to navigate through the bureaucratic mazes and mountains of paperwork. I mean, they say that setting up a business in Shanghai is a bit like learning to use chopsticks for the first time. It seems impossible at first, but with a little patience and a lot of practice, you'll be picking up more than just noodles. I hope today's episode has illuminated the intricate process of establishing a business in this vibrant city. Maybe it's even inspired you to pack your bags, grab your business plan, and head to the bustling streets of Shanghai, chopsticks in hand. Remember, in the world of international business, the journey is just as important as the destination. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more insightful and occasionally humorous episodes from Talk About a Thing. If you found today's deep dive helpful, why not share it with a friend or a fellow entrepreneur? Spreading knowledge is, after all, one of the key ingredients in the recipe for success. Until next time, this is Per Ola Hammer, wishing you success in all your ventures, whether they're in Shanghai or beyond. Keep dreaming big. Stay adaptable and remember, when in doubt, a little humor can go a long way. You've been listening to Talk About a Thing. Parala has lived an interesting life. From life as a foreigner in Shanghai to social media and technology in China, web development, programming, working online, freelancing, he covers a lot. 
We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on all the social media networks at Parallel Hummer. See you next time on Talk About a Thing.